A big part of writing good code is developing good habits that prevent you from making easy mistakes. Context managers and Try Finally are tools to help you do that. The point of both of these is to run some cleanup code even if an exception occurs. Did you open a file? Then you better close it. Did you open a socket? Then you better close it. Did you create a temp file? Then you better close and delete it. Or did you acquire a lock? Then you better release it. Context managers help us ensure that all that cleanup happens automatically, even if there's an exception. If we weren't worried about exceptions, we might just open the file, use the file, and then close the file. But if an exception is thrown here, then the close line never runs and the file stays open until the whole program exits. This can also be an issue if we put an early return or a break or continue in this middle section that prevents us from ever reaching the close. But the file object returned by open here is a context manager, which means that the object itself knows that it needs to do some cleanup. And Python lets you ensure that cleanup happens using a with statement like this. Or as it's more commonly written, like this. Did you open a file? The with statement automatically calls close. Did you open a socket? The with statement automatically calls close. Did you create a temp file? The with statement automatically calls close and deletes the file. Or did you acquire a lock? Again, the with statement automatically calls release. If you want to do multiple of these things, like opening two files, you can even combine them into a single with statement, and Python will ensure all the cleanup still happens. You can even use the built-in context libs exit stack if you have a variable or unknown number of context managers that you want to use. I pretty much never need this, but maybe you will. But starting simpler, the important part for now is to understand when the cleanup code runs. We'll get to how Python knows what cleanup to call for an object later. The rule is that Python runs the cleanup code whenever execution leaves the indented block. I happen to know that for a file, the cleanup code is just calling the close method. So let's do some surgery here and modify the close function so we can see when it runs by adding a print. This function takes an object's old close function and creates a new one that just prints closing and then calls the old one. It sets this new close as the object's close and then returns it back. Let's put that to use in this example. If there's no exception, close runs when we run off the end of the block, after the last statement in the block, and before the first statement outside the block. So as expected, we see before with, then inside with, then the closing run, so we see closing, and then after with. On the other hand, let's see what happens if there's an exception. If there's an exception here, Python saves the exception, runs the close, then continues to raise the exception. This time we'll see before with, then inside with, then the exception will raise, causing the closing to run, so we'll see closing, and then the exception will be caught, and we'll see caught exception. As expected, we see before, inside, closing, and then caught exception. Similarly, if there's a return, break, or continue that would cause execution to leave the with block, the cleanup code runs on the way out, meaning after the statement that causes exiting the block, but before the next statement that would otherwise run next. Keep in mind, this can mean some weird execution flow, like running code after the return statement in a function, but before control flow returns to the caller. In this case, we'll see before, then inside, then returning, then closing, then the stuff after the return. Even if you're already familiar with using with statements, you may not have ever thought about how weird this actually is. We literally have a return statement, and we see that it's executed because we see returning. And then we have code that's running between that and the first thing that we see after the return. Anyway, one way or another, when you leave the with block, Python will run your cleanup code. This is essentially how a try finally works as well. In this case, we can achieve the same effect as using the with statement by putting this file close call in the finally block. The main difference here is that I had to know to call file.close, as opposed to the with statement letting the file object itself decide.
Just like with the with statement, whenever control flow leaves the try finally, the finally part runs on the way out. If your try also has accept or else clauses, the finally runs after any of those. In this case, we'd see before try, then raise the exception, and so we would catch it and see caught exception, then the finally would run, we'd see closing, and then after try. And just like with the with statement, keep in mind that finally code can run after a return statement, which means the finally branch can actually interrupt, replace, or prevent a return. In this case, we start to return inside, but before we actually return to the caller, the finally runs, so we close the file, and then we return from our finally. This new return actually overrides the previous one, so this one is just completely lost, and the function returns finally. And if you liked that one, this is an infinite loop. It never returns, even though there's just a plain return right here. This is because although we start to return something, the finally runs on the way out, and that hits a continue, which then starts at the beginning of the loop. So that return, when we try to return inside, is just completely forgotten about. It's lost. So I hope you're starting to get the idea that maybe returning, continuing, or breaking inside of finally isn't such a great idea. Just to make matters worse, if you use a return, break, or continue inside of finally, that will discard any in-flight exception, just like a bear except password. So it's generally not recommended to return, break, or continue inside of finally. In this case, we tried to raise a value error. There's no except handler in sight, but because we returned from our finally, it's gone. It's just gone. Although by following these best practices, you're not normally going to run into these issues. In general, the semantics of try finally are somewhat simpler than context managers. In fact, the semantics of the with statement are actually defined in terms of try finally. So this little with statement is actually semantically equivalent to all of this extra stuff using try finally. Don't worry, I'll put a time code so you can find this part later. So although try finally is somewhat simpler semantically than context managers, because try finally puts the burden of remembering how to do the cleanup on the user of an object, you should prefer to use a wit statement over a try finally if you can. Now, most programs aren't going to be opening that many files, so unless you're opening tons of files in a loop, it's unlikely that you're going to hit any kind of limit. So it's more of a hygiene thing for files more than anything. However, that's just files. For a lot of your cleanup code, you can't just ignore it and expect everything to be fine. Forgetting to delete a temporary file could mean leaving an unwanted file behind for your user. And forgetting to release a lock could cause your program to freeze while another thread is waiting to acquire that lock. And in general, cleanup code can be pretty much anything, so other parts of your code may just depend on it running. Now on to the how of context managers. How does Python know what cleanup code to run when you exit a with block? It's all part of the definition of the context manager. A context manager is defined by just two methods, enter and exit. If you have these two methods, then you are a context manager and you can be used with a with statement. The enter method runs at the beginning of the with statement and you can grab its return value here. You can actually return anything you want from enter, so if I returned 42 here, then cm would be 42. But the way it reads in English, with expression as name, it really looks like name should be whatever the expression evaluates to. For that reason, it's kind of an unspoken rule that enter should return self. Anyway, the purpose of enter is to enter the context that the object defines. Don't let this fool you though, many context managers do nothing when you enter the context, except maybe check that the exit hasn't already been called. For instance, a call to open opens the file immediately, even if you don't use a with statement. Its enter just checks the file isn't already closed. Contrast this with a lock, which actually does work when you enter the context. It acquires the lock. Both ways of doing it are common, just do whichever one makes the most sense for your situation. Successfully returning from the enter function is what defines having entered the with block. And yes, that means that if you failed to enter because your enter function threw an exception, then the exit never gets called. This makes sense because if you never successfully acquired the resource, then you can't be expected to release it. 
But once you've entered, then Python ensures that if you exit, then the corresponding exit function will be called on the way out. The exit function is where you put your cleanup code, your file close, your lock release. The signature of exit, though, is a little bit wonky. Python gives you information about whether exit is occurring because of an exception or not. The parameters are the exception's type, the actual exception, and the traceback. If you got to the end of the with block normally, you'll see all three of these arguments are none. The wonky part is that if you have an exception, the type of the exception can be accessed like this, and the traceback can be accessed like this. So those arguments are completely redundant. But what if someone tries to raise an exception class instead of an exception instance? Could the exception be none, but the type be value error? You can raise an exception type instead of an instance, but no, Python will instantiate the exception instance before calling your exit function, so the type and traceback really are redundant. So what's the purpose of providing this exception data? Most of the time, you just want to do nothing with it. If you do nothing with the exception, it will automatically continue to propagate after the exit function ends. Don't try to manually re-raise it. Only raise an exception inside an exit function to indicate that the exit itself has failed, like if you went to delete a temp file you created but receive a permissions error when trying to delete it because someone did a recursive sudo chmod on the directory while you weren't looking. That would be a failure in exit itself. On rare occasions, though, you want to suppress the exception from being raised. Just like try except finally can use the accept clause to deal with or ignore certain exceptions, you can prevent certain exceptions from propagating outside a with block by returning a truthy value from your exit function. The simplest example of this is the suppress context manager from the built-in context lib. Let's take a look at its source. Pretty simple, it just takes in some exception types, and then during cleanup, if it sees one of them, it returns true to suppress it. Other than using this built-in suppress, I can't remember the last time I actually wanted to suppress an exception in a context manager, though. Most often, I just want to let exceptions propagate. So I hope you agree that most context managers are extremely simple. Enter does nothing but return self, and exit just calls some other cleanup function. Let this be an invitation to you to write your own simple context managers. If you have a class that you need to open, do something, then close, begin, do something, then end, start, do something, then stop, activate, do something, then deactivate, anytime you have a pair of functions like this, consider creating a context manager to ensure that proper cleanup is impossible to forget. Even if you aren't the author of the code or don't want to modify a class, you can still write a free function that uses someone else's code with a context manager. Say I have a library I'm using that has a begin end style API, but doesn't implement any enter or exit methods. I can still create a function that calls begin and returns a context manager whose exit calls end. If you need the return value of the original begin call, this would be a case where returning something other than self in the enter could be useful. Here we return the result of the original begin call, so I can pretend that the original begin call returned a context manager and use it like this. Instead of begin use end, we just have a single with begin. See my video on Pythonizing the MGUI GUI library for how I personally did this with the open source PyMGUI library. In that library, it was particularly important to use context managers because in MGUI, a forgotten end call will outright crash your program. At this point, I should at the very least mention the context manager decorator from the built-in context lib module. This decorator does some magic to build enter and exit methods using a generator function that you provide. The way it works is you write a generator with a single yield. The stuff up to the yield is called in the enter method, which returns the yielded value. Then the stuff after the yield is called in the exit method. It looks nice and clean until you realize that generators aren't magically immune from exceptions. So in order to ensure the code after the yield actually runs, you need to wrap the yield in a try finally, which to me kind of defeats the purpose of using this method. Yeah, it's still just a single function, which is nice, and it's shorter, definitely shorter than defining a function and the class with enter and exit, but I still prefer the class way. It's really up to you if you prefer this approach. Some people love it, but I pretty much never use this. We should also talk about using context managers for maintaining some kind of actual context. 
I don't know about you, but I'm not sure what kind of context opening a file really entails. I think of it much more like cleanup, not context. To me, entering a context sounds like setting up some variables to be used within this scope, and exiting a context sounds like unsetting or resetting those variables to their old values. These types of context managers are often used for temporarily setting global variables. This can be achieved as follows. When we enter the context, we grab the original value of some global and set it to a new value, and then in exit, we put it back. If you have a bunch of values that you might be setting, this is often wrapped up into a global context object, and you make a copy of the global context before making modifications. This is how the built-in decimal module's local context works. There's a global context object for the decimal library. Well, technically it's a thread local, but we only have one thread. The local context function copies the current context and sets the copy to the active global context. This way, we can do a high-precision calculation in a local context if we have a particularly sensitive function. Then the global context gets set back to whatever it was when we exit the with block. Bonus points if you understand why this actually computes pi. In any case, you can see the first call to pi has less precision than the second one. And finally, we need to talk about the limitations of context managers and try finally. Although both of these do their best to ensure that your cleanup code runs, you can't depend on them absolutely. Firstly, your Python executable is at the mercy of your operating system, and your OS can kill Python without letting the interpreter do any cleanup. If you call sys.exit1, you'll get a nice system exit exception raised and all the cleanup will run as expected on the way up. But if you call os.exit1, there's no exception raised. Context manager exits do not have a chance to run, finally blocks do not run, add exit handlers do not run, it just calls the underscore exit function from C, which the POSIX standard at least guarantees will close file handles, but other than that, do not pass go, do not collect $200, the program is done. But even if you're shutting Python down normally using sys.exit or hitting control C to send a keyboard interrupt, it's still possible that your exit won't run properly if you just so happen to interrupt execution right here in the enter. After the lock is acquired, but before the enter returns. Or right here in the exit after exit starts, but before the lock is released. This is a pretty unlikely thing to happen in a real program, but you can force it just by doing it in a loop. We'll have a while true that just continually locks and unlocks. This is an infinite loop that will interrupt with a keyboard interrupt. As the interrupt travels up, we'll hit this finally where we can check whether or not the lock is unlocked. Most of the time when I interrupt the program, we can see the lock was correctly not locked when the program exits. But some of the time we see that it was still locked, like here. There's nothing particularly wrong with not releasing a lock before the program exits. I'm just using this as an example, so you can see that even in a semi-normal exit case, you can't truly depend on Python to run your cleanup code. This can actually be prevented, but not within Python itself. If you write a custom C extension module, then you can ensure that your enter and exit functions don't get interrupted, which is why things like the built-in lock need to be implemented in C. If I use a real lock here instead of my custom wrapper, you'll find that the lock is always released on exit for exactly this reason. It's written in C and just doesn't give control back to the interpreter in the middle of enter or exit. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks to my patrons and donors. I'll see you in the next one.